Her question is how to not let negative comments and haters derail you from your mission and vision. Why do you give a shit what negative people are saying? First off, let's think about this. If someone has time online to be criticizing you and what you're doing, and, they are, and, and they're just spitting out hurtful comments or hateful comments, or they're criticizing you, you have to recognize, first and foremost, it has nothing to do with you. They are a critical person, and the way that someone judges other people is the way that they judge themselves because guess what if you are coming from a high vibrational place if you're coming from um, a loving place if you're coming from a compassionate place you don't have time to criticize right so first and foremost sage the naysayers because they need love too right because the reason that they're acting out and being mean or hurtful is because that's how they treat themselves that they you wouldn't be projecting that outward unless you had some issues within yourself that need to be cleared up i guarantee the people that are criticizing you or spitting out hateful comments they have some inner healing work to do and this is not to say that we don't judge People judge and there's a difference between judgment and discernment and that's part of the soul ascension journey is to learn that judging others is essentially judging ourselves because we are all connected and when we start to see everyone as equally whole and complete and a spark of creation, then we no longer would judge them. So it's our ego that's judging to begin with, right? It's not our soul that's judging, it's our ego and our personality that judges or criticizes. And the ego and the soul that criticizes, I mean, the ego and the personality that criticizes is doing so from a place of fear. Um, and it's a fear of their own insecurities and fear of their own, um, were, you know, lack of worthiness within themselves that would cause someone to, to seek out other people in their environment and judge and criticize them. So first and foremost, recognize that it has absolutely nothing to do with you. And second, why would you care what a negative person is saying anyways? You, would, you wouldn't even sit down and have a cup of coffee with them. So why would you care what they're saying to you online? It, and I'm not saying that this is easy at first because when you first put yourself out there online and you start to share messages and you start to share your gift and everything and you're vulnerable and then you get nasty comments, of course that's gonna sting at first, but um, you are gonna grow through that. You're gonna grow through that process. It's gonna trigger you. It's meant to trigger you. Why is it meant to trigger you? Because you're not meant to be in reactive mode, reacting to reality that's projecting back to you. You're meant to create your reality. And as long as you're in a knee-jerk reaction mode where you're seeking validation from other people outside of you, then the universe is gonna keep giving you opportunities to reflect back inward. Um, so hence the trigger, right? So there's a lesson in here for, for you know, both. It's not just like spiritual bypassing where you say, oh, well, that person over there, she's just, you know, um, negative and she's just a hurtful person because she's hurting herself kind of thing, which is true. But we also got to turn the mirror back on ourselves and say, why are we being triggered with that to begin with? Because on some level, you're allowing what someone else is saying or doing about you that you probably don't even know that's a complete stranger even um, dictate your own worthiness and actually give them the power to derail her words derail you from your mission and your vision this is your dream you're pursuing your dream you're pursuing your sole purpose you can't come into alignment if you're worried about 
um, what other people are thinking and or using what happens in your external world as a form of validation, right? Because you're challenged right now to step into your full authenticity. And what does that mean? Your full authenticity is actually pure alignment with who you truly are. And that is acceptance of who you truly are. And that is self-love, self-compassion, right? Like a lot of people think authenticity is like owning certain personality traits and things like that. No, 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 no. Authenticity is not owning certain personality traits and, oh, I'm a boss lady and so now I'm going to own that and that's my, you know, me being authentic. No, your authentic truth, when you peel all of it away, when you peel your race away, when you peel your job away, your job title, your friends, your family, your thoughts, your beliefs, your personality, your ego, um, your clothes, the, the house you live in, the car you drive, like the phone you're watching this on, like everything. You put all, you peel all that stuff away, your name, you know, everything. Everything that you've known to be you or that you use as a form of reflection to reconfirm your identity, strip all that shit away until you were left with the consciousness that observes it all and now you're coming into your authentic alignment. And you can't come into your authentic alignment if you're still using other people's opinions as a measuring stick for your worthiness. And so think about the better question is, why would I be giving my power away to someone who maybe you know them, maybe you don't, but why would you be giving your power away and allowing them to be waving this magic wand over your life where it now derails your purpose, your mission, your vision, and your dreams? So there's a lot of lessons here to be had when you are being triggered by people that are being negative naysayers or haters. And now you may still encounter that even when you are in alignment, but it won't trigger you anymore. So the question is, is it triggering you? If it is triggering you, then there's some healing work around that to, to be done, which is, um, or I should say there's some ascension that needs to be done, right? Because um, there's layers of that need to be peeled away so that you can rise in vibration and frequency and consciousness above that and perceive it differently. And when you begin to perceive it differently, the same actions that someone does will, will not trigger you the same way. Something that used to maybe make you like curl up and ball and cry and never go online again for like two months because someone said something hurtful, um, down the road as you grow through this is going to roll right off your back to the point where it's hilarious. It's like funny. It's like funny to me now that other people, something that I'm doing that they know nothing about, um, and maybe they know me, maybe they don't. They're usually complete strangers that have unsolicited advice or opinions or nasty comments or something like that on what I, what it, what I'm putting out into the world. People that are motivated, driven, goal-oriented, following their dreams in alignment with their soul and moving the needle in their own life don't have time to criticize. I'm sorry, they don't. They collaborate, they communicate, they uplift, they see other people doing good and they cheer them on. Those are the people that you will attract into your life as you continue to own your worthiness and your gift and share authentically without worrying about the naysayers and the haters. Because those people that are stuck in that negativity and in that mindset are stuck there because of what they got going on. And again, it has nothing to do with you. So there's just some reflection around this. So the question was, how do you not let negative comments and haters derail you from your mission and vision? Take some time to think about this. If you're getting triggered, why are you getting triggered? Why are you letting them wave a magic wand over your life and decide whether or not you get to follow your mission, uh, align with your mission and see your vision into fruition and follow your dreams? Their opinions are not gonna build your dream business. Their opinions are not gonna pay your bills. The, their opinions are not going to give you the freedom that you're looking for. Their opinions are opinions. And when you think about how many like negative thoughts you have yourself in a day, right? Think about this. How many negative, you have like what, 60 or 70,000 thoughts a day. The majority of them, a lot of times are negative because it's the mind like trying to do like threat prevention and all this other kind of stuff. A lot of them are negative until you start to really train your mind and you shift out of those and you do it consciously and intentionally. 
So do you really have time to worry about anybody else's negative comments when you have enough negative comments swirling around in your own head right now? The rest, everything else is just noise. Everything else is just noise. It does not matter. It does not matter. Focus on your own thoughts. Focus on uh, what you're thinking and believing and perceiving on a regular basis throughout your day. And tune into that so you can shift your own negative thoughts because the reason, because I love this, this is a spiritual law of reflection. There's so much, there's so many lessons going back and forth just in this comment and just in this scenario when you pop up against a naysayer that's like causing, trigger, that's triggering you. You're going to run into it no matter what at all levels of success. Oprah has haters, right? There's people out there that despise Oprah whatever right everybody's gonna have your own opinion you can't win them all right you got to adopt this sort of like roll off your back like forget it like kind of you know mindset and the way you do that is you become so super confident and strong in your own sense of self that nothing else fucking matters the only opinion that truly matters is your own and even that is not something that you should necessarily be buying into if your negative thought patterns and stuff are not in alignment with who you truly are. Because you probably have a lot of opinions about yourself that are not serving you. And so focus your opinion. So when this pops up into your reality though, and it triggers you, then this means there's a cause, a need for self-reflection. There's a need for self-reflection here because of the fact that it is triggering you. and bless the naysayer bless them because they are reflecting back to you something that is still stuck in your energetic frequency that needs to be cleared because you can't go where you're going with that stuck in your energetic field you can't be triggered by that kind of shit and be a sacred leader and step up and own your truth and share your gift and speak your message to the world and you you can't have that in your energetic field so embrace it and be like, thank you. You know, I created that. You create your own reality. You created that. You create the people, you, you, cre you create the good, you create the bad. You can't just one side it and, and, you know, say you create your reality. And then like when something good pops up, like, oh, yay, I created my reality. But when something um, bad comes up, quote unquote bad, that we perceive as an obstacle or a frustration, guess what? You created that too. And you created it for your own soul growth and your own soul ascension. So this is why I always say your spiritual business is your number one ascension tool. So if it's causing, this is a, you know, a time to pause, self-reflect, recognize why it's triggering you and start to shift that belief and recognize, you know, that you can send love to that person. You can, you can bless, you can be like, you know what? I hope whatever is going on with that person is, is going, is, is, is um, serving her to the highest, which it will, right? So you just sort of, you you release it, you let it go. You, you know, they're creating their own reality. You know, when you run into people that are super critical, you could put them in a room in a bunch of different scenarios and no matter what, they're gonna be the one that finds something wrong with everything. You can put somebody else that's in an uplifted, high vibrational mood that recognizes their emotions and their thoughts and has control over creating their reality intentionally. You put them in the same situations and they will find the silver lining. It's just the way it goes. And as you come into more authentic expression of your true self um, and you allow whatever flows out of you to flow out of you with non-judgment and compassion and just come into a state of your own worthiness, that's going to trigger people. And it triggers people on a vibrational level. This is not even necessarily happening consciously. But when you step into your power energetically, vibrationally, and raise up in higher frequency, you have the power to actually help pull other people up. Now, some people are really, really attached to their victim story. In fact, their personality and their identity, like I was talking about before, for, is completely intertwined with the victim mindset and uh, that personality of being critical. And so if they run into someone that challenges that, you know, this happens a lot. If they run into someone that challenges that and they're not ready for it, which is fine, they're going to have resistance to it. They're going to have resistance to it because they're not ready for that yet. 
and on an energetic frequency level, like this is happening. It's not even necessarily happening on a conscious level. So I hope this video finds you well. Um, if this resonates with you and you do want to get over the imposter syndrome, the fear of sharing your gift and your message and speaking the tr your truth with the world, and you want to create a six-figure spiritual business online that supports you and your mission work in addition to your lifestyle goals, then check out the link below this video, wherever you're watching it, you'll find the Soul Line Success Masterclass. And exciting news coming up in October. Um, I love Libra season. This is my birthday coming up soon. And in numerology, you know, I was told by a numerologist at one point that, you know, things always shift for you either at the end of the year or during your birthday. And every single year around my birthday, there's always big changes and big shifts, massive shifts. And so it's just perfect timing to announce that I'm going to be starting live events starting in October. So keep an eye out for that.